Pablo Escobar was and is still known as the richest drug lord to ever walk the earth. However, after his tragic death in 1993, a significant portion of his wealth, which amounted to billions of dollars at the time, mysteriously disappeared and only a small portion of it was ever found again. After Pablo Escobar passed away, we can't but wonder what exactly happened to all of his wealth. Well, now's the time to find out, so keep an eye out. In 2015, a Colombian farmer named Jose Cartolos, who was 65 years old at the time, discovered the greatest portion of Pablo Escobar's stolen money when he was digging trenches for his palm plantation. When Jose unearthed $600 million hidden in plastic barrels on his farm, it was the luckiest day of his life. Imagine the joy this lucky old man must have felt. But after word spread and the Colombian authorities knew about this massive amount of money, the government of Colombia took control of the money and then they spent it on social and economic uses in Colombia. And if you're thinking the same thing I am, you're probably wondering why he ever talks about the money he found. But some people are simply different and have different personalities. Nicolas Escobar, the real-life cousin of Pablo Escobar, discovered around $18 million hidden within the wall of his house, which was used by Escobar as a base of operations in Medellin. Nicholas played an important role in Pablo Escobar's drug operations while Escobar was still alive, and as a result, he was privy to some information regarding Escobar's unusual method of concealing cold, hard cash. Following Pablo's death, Nicholas discovered a stash of money hidden behind a wall, but the discovery did not come without a cost. Nicholas claims he was abducted and tortured by rival cartel members when he found the money, which he said he knew about through a vision. If this allegation from Nicholas doesn't make much sense to you, you're not alone. I mean, duh, it's not like he has x-ray vision, dude. Although part of Pablo's wealth was stolen before his death, all was not lost. In November of 1989, five million dollars were discovered buried in plastic drums in Medellin. The following year, in November of 1990, $26 million and 150 kilograms of gold were discovered buried in Colombia. In 2006, $6 million were discovered in the jungle where Pablo and the Medellin cartel cooked the cocaine supply for the entire world. Moreover, these sums are but a drop in the ocean compared to Pablo Escobar's vast riches. During the height of his business, he was raking in an estimated $150 million each week, or $810,000 per second. If that number stunned you, the next figure will send shivers down your spine. Forbes once ranked Pablo Escobar as the seventh wealthiest person on the planet, and current estimates put his fortune at $30 billion. However, there are rumors that Escobar lost roughly $10 billion every year, owing to the inefficient ways in which he stored his wealth. You now know that Pablo had a huge amount of money and his primary challenge was figuring out how to keep his money safe, as he was unable to use a bank in Colombia due to the fact that none of the country's banks were willing to do business with him. Pablo Escobar, on the other hand, didn't trust banks and instead stacked his money in plastic drums, hid them underground, and kept them in the craziest places imaginable, as the influx of cash was quite significant. According to reports, Pablo spent $1,000 on rubber bands every week in order to bundle his money together. However, the weirdest part of Pablo's method of hiding his money was that after he gave his men the location to store the money, he would kill them. This was done in order to ensure that only Pablo knew the exact place the money was stored, and it was all a part of his big strategy. The only other person who was involved in this strategy was his brother, Roberto Escobar. Roberto was the one who came up with the concept of hiding the money behind walls, which were referred to as caletas by Pablo's men. Each caleta had the capacity to hold up to $5 million, so just imagine all of the properties and mansions that Pablo Escobar owned in Colombia, Florida, and Mexico. Imagine then how much of these caletas must still remain concealed in those houses up to this day. Obviously, not all of Escobar's money was in the form of liquid cash, but the vast majority of it was tied into assets such as his vehicles, residences, and private jets. His mansion, which was known as Hacienda Napolis and was located between Bogota and Medellin, was the most costly of his properties. This home was valued at an astounding $63 million, and it had a soccer field, since it is common knowledge that Pablo was a huge fan of the sport. It also featured dinosaur statues, artificial lakes, a tennis court, and a lot of other nice stuff. But unfortunately, the Colombian government took his property when he passed away. They also took his 15 private jets and six helicopters. 
His car collection was another great addition to his fortune. He drove a 1972 Mercedes 6 Pullman, which was commonly driven by heads of state back then, and which he bought for around $200,000 because at the time, Pablo truly saw himself as the president of Colombia, a dream he had harbored for many years. However, members of the Cali cartel were responsible for the destruction of this magnificent vehicle even before Pablo's murder. This rival cartel was also responsible for the destruction of Pablo's 1964 Porsche 356, Mercedes 19901 Roadster, and other luxurious vehicles. Pablo Escobar's lavish automobile collection served as a symbol of his power and wealth as a drug kingpin. But when relations broke down with the Colombian government, other drug organizations like Los Pepes and the Cali cartel took advantage of the situation to destroy many of Pablo's assets. Among these uncertainties over what happened to Pablo's fortune after his death, a guy named Roberto Sendoya published a book titled Son of Escobar. Sendoya claimed to be a secret son of Pablo. Now, in this book, Roberto told how his mother was murdered in a gunfight, but an MI6 agent who was in the area to watch Escobar's operations rescued him and brought him to safety. This MI6 agent ended up bringing young Roberto with him on his journey back to the UK. But according to Roberto's book, this is where the tale gets fascinating. According to Roberto's book, this MI6 man handed him a coded copy of all the secret sites Pablo had, and he buried Pablo's cash in Florida. Roberto stated that he was able to find some of Pablo's hidden money in Florida with the use of a coded map, which didn't make a lot of sense because I just told you that Pablo had killed his own men to ensure that no one but himself knew the places where that money was. And I don't know about you, but this scenario just doesn't sit right with me anymore. The fact is that the only explanation why Roberto can even lay any claims to Escobar's money is because Pablo Escobar himself didn't leave a will or any form of trust fund for his family. Now, certainly there would have been some cash kept for Pablo's children and his wife, but it was still incredibly difficult for his family especially because they were forced to depart Colombia practically immediately after Pablo Escobar's murder. Now that you've given it some serious thought, it's kind of hilarious. Pablo Escobar was a man who was born into abject poverty, but he amassed so much wealth that he didn't know what to do with it. Pablo Escobar was born on December 1, 1949, and he began involvement in criminal operations at a young age. He started by selling illegal cigarettes and fake lottery tickets to earn just a few dollars. Even though Pablo made a lot of money from these little crimes, he always wanted to climb the ladder to better and greater opportunities, and this moment in his life exemplified who he would become. Because of this, he tried his hand at trafficking drugs and kidnapped people before one thing led to another and he ultimately established the meddling cartel in the year 1976. Before he became successful in the United States during his peak, the meddling cartel allowed him to export cocaine to nations such as Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador and in the United States. Pablo was responsible for around 80% of all the cocaine that was brought into the United States, and he delivered approximately 70 to 80 tons of cocaine every single month. Oh, he made a lot of money, there's no doubt about it. However, as he fell to the ground, gazing at the pistol aimed at his body till the time he ultimately died, all of that money wasn't enough to rescue him. We definitely know a few things, which we've discussed in this video, but the reality is that no one knows what happened to the rest of his hidden wealth and whether or not it was looted after he passed away. So, to answer the question of what happened to his hidden wealth after his death, the answer is that no one knows the full story. But in the meanwhile, share your opinions on this topic in the comments box below. We appreciate you watching, and if you have a moment, please click on the other video that's showing on the screen. It's very cool. So. I'll see you there.